nasal bones and orbits. All right, so for our nasal bone routine um, for our clinical site, we do both laterals, a waters and a tangential. Some of your locations may do a Caldwell as well. So uh, image here just for anatomy purposes. Lateral nasal bones. So these can either be done upright um, or recumbent. So one thing you want to try and do is um, expose nasal bones on non-grid. So a lot of our wall buckies, the grids will come out. Um, so you can just take the grid out and have them standing up, right? And reduce your technique, or they can be laying down um, like in this image here where he's got just the cassette underneath him. So we do both laterals for comparison. The side of interest is the one that's closest to the IR, but interpupillary line, so perpendicular, right? So looking at the orbits here. And then center away, perpendicular, centered to half inch inferior to nasion. Okay, and you're going to do both. So you're going to do a right and left. Make sure and mark the side of interest. Okay, so looking right and left. These are nicely um, collimated. They have a cone here. That's why it's a circular collimation. Okay, yours won't have that because we don't have those at our site. This is uh, demonstrating a nasal bone fracture here, and I like this one for the anatomy identified. Okay. Waters. You guys know waters. We've done waters for skull, waters for sinuses, and waters for facial bones, and now waters for nasal bones. Same, 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 right? MML, perpendicular. You're going to exit at the acanthion. The OML creates that 73 or 37 degree angle. Excuse me, I flip flop those. Okay, but you are going to collimate. You're going to collimate. I do not want to see the entire skull for a nasal bone view, right? So you can cone in close as long as you have the orbits um, and the nasal bone, okay? Please, I don't, and if there's C-spine on there, you know I'm gonna be mad. So the axial or the tangential, so this is the one that uses the GAL, okay? So that line that kind of goes in front of the face here, remember that line when we learned our skull lines? So this person is kind of leaning way over onto the plate. I sit my patient at the end of the table and have them put this under their chin. I simply raise or lower their chin and look for the greatest nasal bone shadow that I can find, right? So your central ray, you're gonna try and match up um, with the GAL here, okay? This is gonna show you medial to lateral displacement this is also a non-grid technique. Watch your SID on this, because if your person, if your patient is sitting upright at the end of the table and your cassette is kind of raised up a little bit, watch your SID. You may have to measure that one out. Okay. So ideally you're looking for the nasal bones free of superimposition from either the chin or the teeth here. Okay. I found on the Fuji. If I process it under a finger, I get a better result than actually the tangential nasal bone setting, right? So I think I like that histogram a little bit better. The PA Caldwell, you guys know how to do a Caldwell, right? Um, it's the same as we've already learned. So OML, 15 degree caudad, exit at the nason. Again, collimate, please. I do not want the entire skull on this one. This is for nasal bones only, okay? Orbits. We don't do orbits often um, at the main hospital, but some of your off-sites might do a good amount of orbits as well. Most hospitals send orbit uh, patients to CAT scan or MRI, but this may come in. Um, so we do um, a Waters, a Caldwell, a lateral, and then this three-point landing, which is also called a Reese method. Um, there's also a modified Waters as well for orbits. And so here's your orbit anatomy and a pretty rainbow color picture. Another orbit anatomy, make sure you know your anatomy as always. All right, so the three-point landing is what they call it. Um, so it's zygoma, nose, and chin are down on the IR. So here, zygoma, nose, and chin. Um, you're gonna do bilateral projections for comparison. So you're gonna do one of each orbit, okay? The central ray is perpendicular to the downside of the orbit one inch superior and posterior to the TEA, so that top of ear attachment, remember that? Okay. 
MSP forms a 53 degree angle to IR and AML perpendicular to IR. Okay. So the three point landing is kind of showing this image here. Nose, zygoma, um, zygoma and chin down. Okay, resting on the table. So an evaluation of it, the optic foramen is in the lower outer quadrant. That's how you can sort of evaluate your positioning for that. Close collimation. Okay, this is a nice detailed anatomy picture here with the foramen identified for you. And a quiz one, so you should probably know these. This was just another visual. I like how this had the anatomy and this diagram here to show you what you're looking at here, okay? This one is not so pretty. Collimation is terrible, right? We just want the orbit. So an exaggerated Caldwell uh, for the PA axial orbits. So we know Caldwell is a 15 degree Caudat angle. This exaggerated Caudal, Caldwell angle um, is 30 degrees Caudat. So instead of 15, you're going to double it. We're going to go to 30. Um, exiting uh, three quarters of an inch distal to Nasion, the Petrus ridges are going to be below, just below the orbits. Waters, you guys know waters. MML perpendicular, exit at the acanthion, OML, 37 degree angle to the image receptor. So teardrop sign. Um, trauma to the orbit increases the intraorbital pressure, causing a fracture of the thin orbital wall. The floor of the orbit is the most common portion of the orbit to sustain a fracture. So a classic finding um, in blowout fractures is the presence of this teardrop sign or um, the polypoid mass protruding from the floor of the orbit into the maxillary antrum. So the teardrop represents the herniated orbital contents, um, periorbital fat and inferior rectus muscle. So here's your teardrop sign over here on the side identified and then your normal orbital floor. So you can see it sort of drops down almost like a sort of upside down triangle right into the maxillary sinus there. This is just showing you um, on a different sort of modality what it will look like. Here's your teardrop sign here. This is a very large one on this side. And the eyebrow sign is associated um, with fractures of maxillary sinus. It allow allows air to leak up into the orbit. It sort of makes this eyebrow shape up here. Foreign body detection, um, at the hospital you may get an order, it'll say I foreign body detection. It is a patient who is going for an MRI and they may have had um, previous history working with mechanics or some type of metal work. Um, they may have had an injury in the past. So basically their doctor is concerned that there might be a metallic fragment somewhere within the orbits or near the orbits. Um, so we do a waters view and I have the patient just look up with their eyes. So normal waters view positioning. I have them look up um, and then I have the radiologist check it. If there's any question, they may have you do the same position and just have their eyes move and look down. Um, or potentially they may ask for a lateral view as well. But so we know the MRI scanner is a very powerful magnet. Um, and so if there's a metallic object near the eye, within the eye, um, we wouldn't want to send them into an MRI with that magnet moving it around and damaging anything. So that's that foreign body detection there. Lateral orbits. Um, so really similar to your lateral facial bone position, your lateral skull, your lateral sinuses, you are just going to, um, you're going to center to the outer canthus. Okay. This is showing you a nail into the face here. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. All right, so lateral orbits, really similar to what you guys have been doing for lateral facial work. And that is it.